Welcome back everyone, I'm Craven and this is Trails in the Sky. Yes, there was a burning at the Mercia Orphanage, but we as Bracers had some other jobs to do and that's what we're gonna do today. We still have uh, two on the board, one is to find a prototype orbital gun, and the other one is to exterminate a monster. So for now, we're just gonna go down the road, see if we can find the exterminated monster and maybe, maybe some other hidden weapon of some kind uh, along the way as well so I'm guessing we'll have to <laughs> find things and hopefully get an exclamation mark somewhere as an indicator that there is something there I did kill one or two enemies already on the road just uh, seeing if I can find the extermination monster in this screen and it wasn't the only thing was left was this chest which we are going to do of course now together Deathblow 2 all right, to be honest, I was expecting a battle of some kind. <laughs> Reduced to searching empty chest. That's really sad. And that truly is. <laughs> All right, let's uh, look a little bit further. Like I said, the enemies are already gone. So the only thing we are looking for right now is maybe an exclamation mark of some kind, which would be a perfect indicator of a drop item, which like I surmised last time, could also just be a reward for defeating the exterminated monster, but we have to find that monster first if you want to know about that. Uh, let's see. Uh, the emu. Those are actually pretty decently strong enemies. Uh, several tower. Beware of monsters. Uh, let's check on this path then. They're warning us for monsters. Could it be that the exterminated monster is over there? Now we are full. So let's use a strike to take one out. Because this was not a preemptive, so we need to be careful. Because I still have oh no definitive idea about what these enemies can do. But apparently they can summon enemies and I'm really certain that these are the ones that can basically evade physical attacks really really well. So let's see what we can do with a little bit of magic. Alright. They're too far away. Oh, that's slightly sad. <laughs> then no. Take the summoner away. And see what you have. Because this is a bigger area. The only problem is, it's a fixed area on the ground. Huh, why not? Let's try it. I have faith in my guessing skills. <laughs> Ooh, might still be a little bit off. All of them, nice. Alright, at least we got rid of the extras, and now Joshua can take care of Mama Bear. Oh. All right. We're good to go. If you get stoned, you get hurt. Alright, let's do a quick heal of the, both of them. And I have no idea what we're actually looking for when it comes to that weapon. Why are you sneaky over there, huh? But uh, I don't know why, there are so many rocks here and the rocks are the one thing that I have in my mind like, yeah, that's where I would put a weapon if I was a developer. On the other hand, giving it to a monster or maybe a bandit would also be another great idea. Okay, that's definitely the extermin to be exterminated monster. So at least we found that one. Turbom! And you found a disappointment. 
Uh, not even a uh, quartz named disappointment. I, I would gladly take that. Just to uh, use it on enemies and then see the expression of disappointment on their faces. Yes, let's uh, get rid of them. Oh, that's a that's a lot. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Ooh, 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 that that's that's not good. That's really not good. Yeah. Do we something that heals and cures stone? We do. We're good to go. Okay, so I'm guessing we need to use magic in order to survive this. Oh, uh, are we not gonna survive this? Is every one of them attacks and none of them misses? Oh, that's not a great idea. Um, there's. Attack the woolly mammoths here. Let's do you know the other one reflects the attacks. And if you're wondering why I'm doing this, to give us a fighting chance. Because then we're gonna use Dushra for health link, and we're gonna use Estelle to keep the healing going. Hopefully it's an elemental that we can use against them. Oh, why are they so fast? <laughs> and they're stealing my magic, the one thing we need in order to defeat them. Why? way too strong and now I think that's is it locking away our magic or is it just, it just entirely stop is locking away our magic what's going on with this fight an enemy which we need to use magic in order to defeat them with the ability to block all outgoing magic that that that's insane. You know what? We need to prep for this. Cause if we only get like the first strike, because Joshua was first and Estelle could heal him, so there are two attacks we can do. If we use an AoE attack take them out before anything can happen maybe maybe then we can do something about it but I would need to build up an entire party of that so we haven't done anything yet in this episode so I'm gonna go for it I'm gonna see what happens if we try can I unseal her Do we have anything against that? Is it sealed though? Let's try. It's not considered sealed. Which is insane. It means we don't have anything to go against it. What is that state? I need to look in the book what that status is. Because we're not going to be able to do anything against this. No attack magics whatsoever. Let's uh, use this as a learning experience. Let's see what happens if she attacks it. Was it a flu? Or is it just that, uh, a mechanic that we need to use our magic against it? No, it's definitely a reflag. It's still not gone. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna waste too much time on this cause this is lost. We can't do anything about this. Not now. Can you see how many moves there are still ahead of this? I do wonder where they attack so little. Is it only the ones that we have attacked? Is it like a defense mechanism? Can we run? We can. Okay. I'm not really proud of running away from an enemy, but they were not leaving me any choice in this matter. Uh, you know what? Let's hope the game is uh, a little bit favorable and let's run back, heal up, prepare, and come back to fight this again. <laughs> I think we can do this. All right, we have prepped and we're gonna try again. What did I change differently? Well, uh, I updated the orpment. What does I say? Get up of uh, Joshua. So we have uh, uh, more shadow points, which means we have now Hellgate, Shadow Spear. Both of them paint and destroy. But in the process, we also got Stone Impact, which is a bigger area of attack. But more importantly, cast 2 enhances how quickly you can cast a magic after you start casting it. So I'm hoping with that we can make Joshua attack before the enemy can do anything. And with the area, maybe, hopefully, uh, we can maybe make it a smaller area. Like, I mean... Uh, destroy more of them before we can do anything so let's try it again and the first action we might even be doing is just run away I mean not out of the fight but I mean move our characters away from them so they can start funneling it funneling in to one central point where the area attack actually can hit all of them at once yeah cuz uh, can't uh, beat them at once come back better and beat them thoroughly all right let's see how far away we can walk from them not pretty far the biggest part of this is not getting attacked what if Estelle is not allowed to do anything then we might be in trouble uh, and I don't care about the backup I, I want them all to move towards us and not just the little ones because we can take care of those This is already a lot better. Let's see uh, what it does. Of course, <laughs> they move out of the zone, but it, it's about the hermit crabs. They want to destroy because we can't do anything with them with a physical attack. You know, the moves that we are used to using. Oh, that's bad. Alright, they're getting closer. Alright, let's still do your magic. I mean, quite literally. Uh, that's which one are the ones we are going to move? I, I need to know which two hermit crabs. Let's... That one. And that one. Okay, so that one is not going to be a problem. This one, however, will probably move a little bit closer. And for the rest, there are all fluffy bunnies that are going to attack us. I want to do this, but I know that one of them is definitely going to move out of it. This is especially the fluffy ones. So I'm going to take a little bit of a chance. A very little bit of a chance. Oh, he's moving to the one person I didn't want him to go to. Yeah, move on up, everyone. Don't impede her. I'm 
good. Run away. Alright. And I know this fight is taking much longer than it's uh, supposed to be, but I think it does give us a nice uh, look on how I uh, <laughs> see things. Alright, so those are two that will not be able to move before him. Is the other one Hellgate also? This is a two. That. Five hundred thirty. We're definitely gonna get that. And since we cannot touch a lot, maybe we can faint uh, them. Uh, she's out of the running. Okay, we still got Joshua to be able to do anything. Alright. <laughs> Might be one of your last chances, boy. Already sealed. Live luck. Might be able to let the other hermit crab attack her. <laughs> All right. Oh, that was an area attack. Oh, I thought it was uh, aimed at the still itself. Oh no! Oh, this game really, really wants to mess with me, does it? Ooh, we got our magic back. Uh, is there any element specific? Nope, all elements will do. Oh, I'm still encasing that. Got this, Josh. Take. Hell yeah. I knew we could do it. That's that like I said before, sorry, this out. might have been a very long part of the combat. I'm gonna see how much I can edit it down. But like, I really do like the fact that I lost, I came back, and I basically messed them up. I like that. All right. Extermination done. Oh, and found a zero type test model. I knew it. It has to be a chest or it had to be the monster. Mm. Two quests at once. Beautiful. Okay, so you know what? <laughs> Let's head back to town, deliver the model and then deliver both quests to the guild uh, to report. And then we can investigate the fire at the Mercia Orphanage. Okay, so I will see you back in town. All right, so we're back in ruin. And as you can see, we rested up a little bit already at the end to get our HP and EP back. So for now, let's check out our books and see where we actually need to be to deliver uh, the actual weapon. Didn't I already do that? Oh, I did, I did, I did, I did, I did, I did. Yes, we gave the warehouse key. We just didn't uh, deliver it yet. Here it is. You happen to find it, bring it to Joan Arms and Guard. And we did. So let's go to the weapon shop, and deliver it, and see what they have to say about themselves by just letting a weapon run wild in the wild. That's not a good thing. 
Ah, can you believe I've been here for 10 years already? They certainly do creep up on you. Ah, I came here from Zeiss to do market research into orbital powered firearms. The Orion Crossway is crawling with some extremely aggressive monsters. I have an extremely important prototype model that I was trying to work the box out of. Ah, yes, I saw the bulletin board. So what you lost is this orbital gun thingy? Yes, that's correct. If you should find it, I beg of you. Is this the prototype gun? Hand it over, zero type test model. How, how did you get your hands on this? A monster near the several tower headed. It probably wanted it for the Septian mechanism. In Adios' name, thank you so much. Oh, thank goodness you found it. And now we fulfilled your request. Pardon us, but we must be going. Why are you in such a hurry? Please, at least take this with you. Attack two quarts, nice. Just as a token of my appreciation. I wish you luck on your future endeavors. Thanks. Nice, nice, and double nice. So nice, we tanked him twice. Alright, so we have... Attack plus two. Of course, I always like to give uh, my favorite person some extra attack and the fact that he gets some flame arrows as well is just a little extra bonus. So what does it actually do? Single attack, but more powerful. And that combined with the cast 2 he's now carrying makes Joshua a pretty decent magical attack user and with his extra EP even more. So. I think that is a good thing, so let's get back to the guild, deliver back all the requests, and then we can start investigating the fire. Nothing extra, find the prototype, and the Orion Road Monster. Yeah, we, we definitely deserve a lot more money and BP for this, because that fight was hard, so much worse than any other monster we faced so far. Even though it only comes from the one skill the monster had, and that is 100% uh, just reflecting physical damage, which was annoying. But yes, <laughs> still very happy that I did it. Uh, much obliged. Your peers have achieved your goal without injury. If you complete any other jobs, be sure to give me all the juicy details. Oh, uh, we will. Okay, nothing new. So we are. Definitely ready to uh, start investigating the fire at the orphanage. So let's uh, head out there. Damn, that's uh, absolute devastation. The one who did this really knew what they were doing. This is terrible. It's just gone. Well, who do we have here? Are you here from the Bracer Guild? Yeah. You're all from Minoria, right? Yeah, we came to help pick up the pieces. We were here last night around midnight, trying to fight the fire. As you can see, it could have gone better. So then, what about Matron Teresa and the kids? They're all fine, don't worry. Right now, they're sleeping it off at the Minoria Inn. Given the size of the fire, it's a miracle that no one was badly hurt. Thank goodness. Yes, at least that's something. We're here now to clean up what we can. How about you do? Well, we really ought to check up on everyone at the inn. Sorry, but that'll have to wait. Huh? Now that we are here at the crime scene, there's a lot that strikes me as weird. We need to find what clues we can before the trails goes cold, so to speak. I know how you feel, but this has to take precedence right now. Right, we're braces after all. We have to find out what happened. Right, so let's see what we can find. Looks like you'll have your hands full. Good luck. Yeah, Estelle is such a people person, so you can imagine she wants to go to uh, the kids and Teresa just to figure out how they're all doing, if they're all fine. But Joshua, he's right in this. We need to find the evidence before it gets lost by whatever reason, rain, 
cross-contamination, anything like that. I'm sure there are a few clues here to find. The soil from the flower bed is all over the ground. Which would indicate that someone was hiding in the flower bushes maybe, or fled through them. The milk tank has, fall tank has fallen on its side and it's empty. The barrels with food in them have been scorched black. Which could indicate that this was the point of origin maybe? Well the once a wall is now rubble. Wow, this place is ruined. Hey, do you smell something strange? Yeah, and I think I know why. The strange smell is strongest where the wall has collapsed. Accelerant, that's what it is. That's what we're smelling as well. Is it conclusive evidence? Not yet, but it is a very potent one. The door has been completely wrecked. Uh, it's all pitch black. Huh? What's wrong? Maybe this is just me, but does the hinge here look weird to you? Like it's been torn off or something. It does actually. As if it happened before the fire started. So not only did they try to burn the building down, they tried to hinder their escape. That's just new levels of evil, it really is trying to uh, kill some kids and basically their fairy godmother because that's exactly what Teresa is the barely food of them have been scorched black since the fire burned so much I guess the only thing to do is to rebuild I, I don't know what Matron Teresa is going to do I mean it's going to be really expensive well can we not ask around the mayor of Roland and Bose? Pull their R strings, see if we can get some cash in from other regions. Maybe go to the Queen. Ask for her to fund this brilliant setup of an orphanage, because these kids they need support. Just throwing out some ideas there. Man, I was in shock yesterday. I mean, seeing the sky go all red in the east of over Menoria. I tried to get here as quickly as I could, but everything was already gone. Alright, anything else? The stomp seats around the table have been scattered about. Does that mean that it's like someone is trying to look like it's been ruffled up before the burning? The herbs have been uprooted and strewn all about the garden. Yeah, it definitely does sound like a message is trying to be uh, given by someone. The firewood for the stove has been scattered all around. side is there an indicator if you have found everything I, to be honest I think I have even a few more than I would expect to find is there any way for us to get inside it there isn't isn't there no Nothing at the fence itself. I do understand, but we have to go and visit later. If we don't find out what, uh, how this happened. Okay, does, does that mean that we are still missing a clue or something? Because I can imagine that once we found the, all the clues that the game will give us an indicator of sorts. So what are we missing? Okay, so we need to click a second time. Alright, we've taken a good look around. What do you think? Well, I'm not sure to be honest. First off, the fire doesn't appear to have started in the building. It most likely started outside. Outside? Over here. 
It looks like this area is the point of origin. Ah, where the wall collapsed. But how can you tell? Because the fire damage is worse here than anywhere else. Compare it to the areas nearby and you'll see. Ah, you're right. So it started here and then spread. You know what this means. Uh, well, uh, it got caught uh, in a forest fire. Someone set the fire on purpose. It was an accident with a lantern. No, someone set the fire on purpose. My thoughts exactly. The smell everywhere, it's some highly flammable oil. It's everywhere around here, so this has to be the fire point of origin. No way. Plus, don't you think it's weird how everything outside is scattered around? Even the people fighting the fire wouldn't have done that to the herb garden. It's not a coincidence, someone did this. I is that true? Chloe. Oh, I didn't know you were, de were here. But why? Why would anyone do this? I have so many irreplaceable memories of this place. Why? How? How could someone do anything so cruel? Chloe. I'm sorry. I I'm just so confused. I... I... You're not alone in this feeling. I barely know the place and... This bothers the heck out of me too. It's hard to believe that anyone could be capable of something this awful. Still, but the matron and the kids are all okay. So we can be thankful for that, right? <sighs> Thank you. That does help. I, I just started morning classes when the dean came to see me. He said that he'd heard that the orphanage was in flames. And while I was on my way here, all I could think about was they're fine, they're alive. Ayos was watching over them. Well, we heard that they're all at the inn in Minoria. Safe and sound. We just finished up here, so we're planning to go see them. Do you want to come with us? Yes, I would like that very much. Alright then, to Minoria we go. Hey, Mighty Bracer, you find anything out? Yes, we did. But we're not gonna tell it to everyone. Because there might just be someone on the inside that know much more about this. We need to be careful. We definitely need to... Everyone is a suspect. I've known Matron and Teresa ever since I was a kid. Fighting the fire took some serious dedication, let me tell you. Alright, let's go see how the kids are doing. They're probably very upset. And maybe seeing a familiar face like Chloe might help at least a little bit. Yeah, some fighters that go directly towards uh, the city. Mm, there's the inn, so talk to everybody else before we head in there. I heard there was a fire at the orphanage. I saw all the kids go by crying. I feel so bad for them. I can imagine so. The village certainly seems busy. Did something happen? Yep, something did. Last night, I saw the eastern sky turn red and the stars were hidden from the view by rising smoke. I sent young men from the village to combat the blaze, but alas, we could not save the orphanage. At least there is some small comfort to be found in the fact that no one was hurt. Yeah, but I don't think that was on purpose. Because uh, if they broke the handle on the door, they wanted people to get hurt. And the fact that they strewn everything around the entire place, I'm still saying it's a sign. Like they're trying to convey a message like, get out of here. No, but you can. But uh, before we go on any wild theories about this, we need more information. We'll, we'll get to the bottom of this, 100% for sure. Everyone from the orphanage came over. They were all upset about something though. I wonder what happened. Zack tore out of here last night when he found out about the fire. I suppose he's still trying to help out over there. He really is a very dependable person. Well, at least his heart is in the right place. I 
I heard the kids crying upstairs. What in the world happened? Hmm, something unusual is going on. Was everything destroyed in the fire at the orphanage? I went ahead and let the kids use my room. If you wouldn't mind, could you go and try and cheer them up a little bit? Oh, we'll definitely try in a moment, I can guarantee you that. Did we also did the... I think we did. Oh, that's a Royal Academy uniform. Is your name Chloe by any chance? Yes, why do you ask? The children from the orphanage talk about you a great deal. They're all upstairs in the big room. You should go and see them whenever you get the chance. Oh, I will. Pardon me. Matron, everyone. Miss Chloe, you came. Is everyone hurt? No, we're okay. <laughs> I, I, aw, I is okay. She really has a speech impediment. It's fine. We all do a little bit. <laughs> ah, thank goodness. Ah, uh, I'm glad you're here. Is that Estelle and Joshua I see with you? Yes, since someone contacted the guild. We are investigating the incident and thought we'd stop by. I see. Thank you for taking the time. Investigating? You mean about the fire, right? Do you know who did it? Hmm. Well, how to put it? Estelle and Joshua exchange awkward glances. So, who's hungry? I missed breakfast and so I was thinking about getting some food. Good boys and girls, who joins me and will get some sweet treat? Really? I want some pudding. But... Come on, Clem. Hmm? Quit griping and come on. Let's go downstairs with Miss Chloe. <laughs> okay. Yeah, she's uh, leading the kids out of here so we can talk business with the matron. Phew, that was close. I really wouldn't want to, uh, little kids to hear about this. Indeed. Although, I get the feeling that Mary understands at least some of what's going on. <laughs> yeah, is she great. I'm happy to have her around. Now, you were saying? Please, tell me what you can. Thank you for understanding. Okay then. First, we checked out where the fire started, and it does appear that it was set deliberately. My suspicions were correct then. I've always been very careful about fire, so I suspected it might be something like that. Do you have any idea who could have done this? Whoever was responsible must have had some kind of motivation. I have no idea. We have no real money to speak of, nor has anyone ever borne a grudge against us. So, it wasn't a robbery, and it wasn't for revenge. Well, we have to acknowledge the possibility that someone did it just for fun. Did you happen to notice anything unusual leading up or during the incident? Well, to be honest, for fun? I don't think so. Cause then the door would not have been deliberately sabotaged, so I think there is more to it, definitely. Any strange people hanging around the orphanage, for instance? Well, yes, actually. Not during the daytime when you were there, but afterwards. Though, I can't imagine he would do something like this. Who's he? Well, while uh, we were trying to escape from the burning building, the beams fell in and blocked our way through the entire entry hall. But then he showed up and helped us all get free. We owe him our lives. Really? Was he Minorian? Well, right after he helped us, he called the villagers over and left in the confusion. I asked the other villagers about him, but no one seemed to know anything. Hmm. Sounds suspicious. What business would anyone have around the orphanage at such a late hour? Did you notice anything in particular about him? Well, he was a man. Maybe in his late twenties? He also had brilliant silver hair. Silver hair? Hmm, yes, he had a troubled look about him, though. That made him seem far older than he looked. But he didn't strike me as a bad man. He sounds suspicious, but he did help you out. Doesn't sound like our guy to me. Well, that doesn't exclude him as our guy. The only thing it means is if he was the one that started the fire, as soon as he noticed there were actual people in the building, he tried to save them. That, that doesn't 
exonerate him from being the one that potentially lit the fire. Joshua? What's with the goofy stare? Oh, <laughs> it's nothing. Perhaps he was just a bracer who helped to uh, pass by. I think that we should disregard him as a suspect. Hmm, okay. I do not agree with you two there. Uh, pardon me. Oh, hi Chloe. Where are the children? Well, they're downstairs having some dessert. Matron Teresa, you have a guest. Hmm? Uh, pardon my intrusion. Oh! Mayor Dalmore. Ah, so the braces I met yesterday are here as well. Jean's reputation for responding quickly is well earned. Now then. It's good to see you again, Matron Teresa. After I heard what happened, I came over as quickly as I could. I'm glad that you're sa safe and sound. Thank you, Mayor. It's very kind of you to come by. I know you're a very busy man. Nonsense. It's my responsibility to look after all areas of the region. More to the point, those who did this must not be allowed to get away with it. Joseph always loved that place. Such an atrocity. Allow me to express my heartfelt condolences. Thank you. But I am sure that he would just be relieved that the children are alive and well. My sole regret is that all my mementos of him were lost in the fire. Ah, oh, Matron Teresa. Tell me, Bracers, have you any thoughts on who might have done this? Well, we've only just begun our investigation, so it's too early to say, sir. It does look like it might have been simply out of malice, however. I see. What a terrible thought. For something so heinous to happen in such a peaceful place. Uh, pardon me, Mayor. Hmm? Uh, what is it? Do you think that those people might have a hand in this? Hmm? Whoa, whoa, oh, hold up. What do you mean by those people? Well, you encountered them yesterday. The ruffians down in the warehouse district of Ruin. Oh, them. Pardon my blondness, but what makes you suspect them? Well, they've been openly defying the mayor for quite some time now. They certainly seem to get their kicks out of causing trouble for him. And since he and Major Teresa are friends, it... Gilbert. Oh, sir. Wild speculation does no one any good. This is a dire offense. We must have no false accusations. Oh, my apologies, sir. That was foolish of me. I think it would be better to let the braces identify and locate the ones responsible. Can I count on your help? Sure, leave it to us. We will devote our full attention to it, sir. Ah, good, good. I'm glad to hear it. By the way, Matron Teresa, I do have one question to ask. What is it? What do you plan to do with the orphanage now? Rebuilding will take time, and not an inconsiderable amount of mirror to complete. Honestly, I'm at a loss. We have a modest reserve of mirror, but the cost will be phenomenal. Matron... I was afraid of that. Well, I have a proposal of sorts for you. What might that be? Well, at the Dalmar Estate in Grenzel, I have a villa. It's only used for special occasions, so... What say you to having the children stay there for a little while? Oh. And of course, charging rent would be particularly boorish of me. You will be welcome to stay there for as long as the rebuilding process takes. But there's no need for you to shoulder the burden of our troubles. But the villa sits unused. If you have misgivings, then I will grant you control of the grounds. Think of it as a well-deserved reward, if you will. Mayor. May I have some time to think it over? Your offer is most generous, but I can barely process it with everything going on. Ah, perfectly understandable. You should get some rest. It must be off as well. If you decide to accept, please feel free to contact me. I will. Thank you so very much. Let us go, Gilbert. Yes, sir. May I say that I find it a little bit suspicious? I know I said at the orphanage that we suspect everyone, but for some reason, the fact that how quickly he was here, and that one of his first questions he asked us was, what are you going to do with the grounds now? And I don't know what it is, but it sounds a bit suspicious. And then being overly given, giving, to help the matron and the kids to get back on their feet while they're waiting to rebuild. 
I don't know. It, it feels weird. I know he's a nice mayor so far, but I just can't put my finger on it. So maybe at a later point we can have some confirmation there. Or if I'm just being a very big meanie. We'll see. Wow, that was a shock. He certainly is the generous type on par with Mayor Mabel. Indeed, particularly in light of his being a former noble. What do you intend to do in regards to the Mayor's offer, Matron? Well, what do you think of the situation? Confessional wisdom dictates that you should accept it. However, once you've gone to Grenzel... Ah, never mind. Ah, you always were such a thoughtful child. It's alright. I want you to give me your honest opinion. The herb garden and the people I care about would be gone. So, and... without you and Joseph gone, I feel like all my good memories will fade away. I'm sorry, I'm just being stupid and selfish. Hmm, I share your feeling. The orphanage is home to my memories of him, as well as the children's memories. But tough memories are precious, having a place to live is of the utmost importance. Yes, ma'am. I believe this will all be settled soon. Please, try to focus on tending to the campus festival for now. The children are really looking forward to it. Yes, ma'am. Estelle and Joshua? I wish I could be of more help, but I must leave the investigation in your hands. We will handle it, ma'am. We're giving it the... We're going to take the culprit down. You can count on it. Yeah. And I just noticed in that conversation that the villa that he's offering is not in this town. It's in Grenzel, and I think that's the main city, right? The capital. So not only is he showing off his intent to be helpful, but he's also taking them so far away that the grounds itself might not be interested anymore if they can find a way to settle there. Huh. Yeah. Still sounds very suspicious. But yeah. This sure has turned into a royal mess. Why should we start the search? Hmm. Maybe we should go to the guild and report back to Jean. We can figure out a plan of attack then. Sounds good to me. Something wrong? You look like something's bugging you. Oh, I'm sorry. My mind is just all over the place right now. I know how you feel. By the way, Joseph was Matron Teresa's husband, right? Yes. He died several years ago, but he means a great deal to me as well. I see. Wait. Does that mean you're from the orphanage too? Oh no, nothing like that. He, he just did a huge favor for me a long time ago. We grew close again when I came to ruin to attend the academy. Oh, I see. So in other words, every time you came by to play, you ended up helping out, like a part of the family. Yes. He was like a father to me, but the shock I experienced was nothing compared to that of Matron and the other children. But we managed somehow. Miss Chloe. Mary, what's gotten into you? Such a hurry. Listen, Clem's gone. Hmm? Y you don't mean he's left Menoria? Can you give us some more details? Okay. After that old man showed up, Clem went upstairs. In a couple of minutes he came back down all red in the face saying, They're not getting away with this. Then he just ran off. I wonder who he meant. You don't suppose it's... Mayor Delmore and his steward. Definitely. Or the gangs at the warehouse. Or the... Well... The orphanage arsonist, that's a thing. Hmm. Considering if he listened into our conversation, uh, suspecting Mayor Dolmer is a thing that I have right now and I have no evidence for it, but Gilbert did say the gang at the warehouse did anything. So, from his perspective, I think Clan would be the gang at the warehouse. Yes, I believe it was the Ravens. He probably overheard what the steward said. Oh no. I hope he's not planning to go and find them himself. It it can't be. I can't allow this. I have to find him at once. We'll come with you. If we hurry, we might be able to catch him before he gets to ruin. Miss Chloe? Don't would you worry. I'll bring him back safely. You just look after the other children, alright? Okay, good luck. Let's head back to ruin. Alright. 
Yep, and just like uh, Matron Teresa said, Mary is a very good girl. And you can really see that she cares about the children and helps out along with the rest of them. Yeah, Matron can be proud of that one. Alright, but we are going to leave it there. Next time we're going to go back to Ruin, see if we can help Clem not get in trouble at the Ravens. Because if he's just going to barge in there, there as a child, I doubt they'll hurt him, but it would definitely not be a pleasant uh, experience for him. So, that's what we're going to do next time. Until then, I wish you all a great night, morning, day, wherever you are. And if you are still here, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.